I, uh, yeah, I lead an institute called Conscious City because for a while I was um, yeah, quite involved in Smart City and then some questions came up and I said we have a, a problem here because we're talking a lot about solutions but actually um, what is beginning to happen is a kind of awareness and uh, at least we, we begin to know more about things through the data but uh, at the same time there's another kind of awareness uh, growing uh, coming through this revolution that we just uh, just heard about. So I have 10 points, and we'll try to go to them in, in 10 minutes. And the, the first one is about the second skin of the of the Earth as it as, as, as describes through two cosmologies. And the the one the one cosmology is on, on the left is, is is the topic that I have to work with most because my institute officially is called uh, Sustainable Urban Planning and Urban Design. I thought that was too long. That's, that's why I chose the Constant City. And the, on the left, we have climate change, which is a kind of a huge thing that is hitting us uh, faster than we want. And on the, the, the right side, we have a similar set, a similar global form, which is made up by data. And I feel that these, these two cosmologies are, are probably the biggest thing that, that are happening to us uh, at the moment, to, to humans. And of course, cities are bits of the skin. And maybe what is likely for us is that the, that the totality of the data now are global. And that perhaps with that, uh, we have the chance to do something about climate change. So the question here is, what do we actually do with this, 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 this digital revolution? And of course, we can have a better life, more comfort, and live longer. And, and we can be also address really big questions like survival on the planet. So that, that's, that's in a way the big, the big frame I set uh, with all the work around us. And um, then at the same time, we have, uh, we have to do something. We have to actually try out uh, what can we do? How can we bring these two things together? And you know, data and resource efficiency and so on and so forth. And we heard already quite a lot of the great experiments that are happening in, um, in, in uh, Barcelona. And what we've been doing in, in my institute is trying to kind of also systematize a little bit. What is the city actually now? So that little bracket that you saw before, if we take it out, this is actually an example of a project we did in, in London for the Old Oak Common District, kind of the largest development district in Europe, and where we started to say, okay, what would, you, what would actually happen if you really built a complete new smart city? Totally new. Everything's new. And, and how do you systematize it? And uh, the, the, the kind of green, gray bit in the middle where it says urban space is maybe the traditional city that we know with squares, and buildings, and, and so on. And then below that, we have the systems with which we run it. And increasingly, the systems make up the shape of the city. And um, above that, we have then what you would call the cloud, right? which is uh, in terms of liquidity. That's where it happens. It's the new sea, right? the, the liquidity, the sea of data. I always talk about my, my, my students as saying that they're already kind of a bit old because they still remember pre-smartphone eras and the, the younger kids, you know, six, seven, eight, they're like fish in the water, in the water being the data. They don't know a world without <laughs> data. So that's that. And we have to learn how to draw that. As architects, we actually have a problem. We don't even we don't know how to draw that. You know, where, where do you draw a sensor? Where do you... Put it, there will be trillions of sensors in here, and the flows. How do you draw these flows? This is a new spatial layer of the city. And below that is, of course, this, the, you know, the organizational structure, the people, the citizens, uh, the, the organizations that have to run all this and all the connectors together. Of course, we have intelligent systems. That's what Smart City is about. And, and what we're trying to do is, is classify the intelligent system. So we're saying it has to be standardized. We work with, uh, on and off with DIM at the moment. ESO, and we're trying to kind of classify everything that goes on in the smart city. All systems and, and intelligence uh, systems and so on and so forth. And we're trying to classify them according to prototypical things, new things, uh, existing things. And then in a way, and with these classifications, we, we make very simple sets to engage as many people as possible. Because what we need to do is, 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 is reform the way that we make cities. Uh, we plan cities. So what we do is, I'll go back once more, what we do is we test these, these sets everywhere. 
And one of the topics that we are testing at the moment is a really physical way of making a city, because if you ask yourself how do you actually build a city from the bottom up, smart city, you have to rethink the whole idea of, of construction. And uh, in order that we can kind of put these cards somewhere, and say here, this bit, uh, this happens, and this system we connect together with this one. So what we started to do is actually, going back to kind of my, my origin, just uh, being a, an architect, and we said we had to start making building kits. Uh, and we've been doing that now for a year and a half. Is we're making building kits for, for Berlin. Uh, Berlin has a deficit of about 20,000 housing units, uh, low-cost housing units, yearly. Uh, the <coughs> targets are not met. So we've started to ask the question, we have the digitalization revolution, uh, we have the industry 4.0, uh, we have the, uh, the, the pressures, um, and how do we do that actually? So we started working on systems, that we call it actually industry 5.0, because my students are here to design robotic systems, not just buy them, but actually design with which we can create completely new uh, building kits, uh, which are aimed at the moment at, at, at to, to get rid of this deficit, because uh, you have to go, as uh, uh, Mr. Muller said yesterday, at the reception of the Digibo, we have to, we have to be fast, so not just low cost, and, and, and in Germany say günstig. So what we started to do is actually starting to produce the, the production lines. So my architects are designing production lines with which we can create the building kits. And on the left was the performative project we offered to the Temple of uh, Cultural District project. We said we'd like to build a, a production line in, in your cultural district. Uh, the building is a wine, that's not culture. And then, and then we said yes, but if we want to actually create, generate a deficit, you know, help solve the deficit of 20,000 housing units, we have to actually show people how this can be done and get them involved through digital crowdsourcing and, and, and so on. So that is a model factory in, in Tempelhof. And at the moment we are working with uh, different uh, housing associations to see if we can actually build a series of tests, not pilots, but test projects as part of larger project next, next year. Next year. Um, there's a new thing that we've been doing for a while, but we're beginning to bring it out. There's a big topic called, uh, called participation. Uh, how do you actually participate in these, these processes? The former speaker already has talked about how do you bring citizens uh, on board? How do people own the process? So we've, over several years, we've been doing tests with, with a game set where we use these standardized cards to literally pay games. On the left, you see that in the TU, we do that with, with very young students. We teach them how to negotiate, much smart city development. On the right side, you see uh, this, the same down, same down, this European project where it's a range of 11 cities. We actually use this card system. I forgot my box, but we have now produced a card box, which we'll start producing uh, for use in, in, in the secondary schools. We're going to start in Charlottenburg in the spring. Uh, this, this game. So these are planned games. <coughs> Here we play with the different Europeans things to, to negotiate <coughs> about which systems you actually would have to integrate to get to certain objectives in the, in the smart city, just like we've been seeing before. Um, now, we've been building a tool for that, we call it the brain box, in which we uh, address the issue of, of democracy more, it's a space for new democracy. We've been showing it on several expos, and it has a series of digital interfaces. So we go from the Unreal game, we go through interfaces to digital worlds, and we have complete, complete models of Berlin. <coughs> then we go out and we teach children how to play this analog game, but in this interface so we can start seeing, showing how you actually digitalize that. And how, do, how can it look like if you make a smart city Berlin? Where, how, and how many of, of, of uh, housing units you can actually create with these new building kits. <coughs> and the right, you see a, an exhibition where we, uh, that we, call, we call it the Cora Brain Box. Uh, we exhibited that in the, um, in the Metzel, here in Metropolitan Solutions, here in Berlin. Now, if you start negotiating, you have to also say, accept that it's not always your project that wins, or that you are not the one that is going to create the master project. So you have to uh, co-evolve with other people. So what we also try to work on is projects that create co-evolution. And here you see a very large project we've been working on for 12 years. We're creating a manual for the towers straight where we can think smart city and conscious city as we call it now is a possibility creates a possibility to lift that negotiation up on a to global scale in places of potential conflict and there's a firewall for example between china which you see on the left is the east coast of china and taiwan uh, data both 
don't flow easily across this boundary. So what point, kinds of incubator projects we can create uh, that on a, on a global scale that actually also help negotiate conflicts through digitization and through the construction of, of digital projects, what we call an incu incubator space, an incubator design space. Now we have to, of course, do that with gamification. So we developed some games. This is a game we played in the, in the city of Chengdu. Here you see uh, Smart City Chengdu, where we created in the Biennale of Art and Architecture a big game on the plan of the city of, of, uh, of Chengdu, where uh, we love this image where children were taught to play. These games, they represent, again, the standardized version of Smart City. But of course, what we do with that is to handle the dynamics complexity of actually reaching objectives. Here you see interactive maps of the city of Chengdu, where you see some of the just building kits for the smart city, not for the housing units, but for the, all the systems. And it, 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 once it animates, it animates also the graphs of performance, because we want to know, is it actually possible to create a, a zero carbon city? And, and, and those kinds of questions are really big questions, very difficult to reach. What kind of uh, combinations you need to get, and then you turn that into a practical experience by cluster, clustering things. So that led us to the idea of a conscious city, and the reason for that is that we think there is a consciousness emerging that we perhaps have to learn to negotiate with. Right? The digitalization creates a big wave. And we think that the uh, aggregative intelligence systems that are landing now in cities will eventually begin to create a kind of parallel consciousness, and we may not control that. We may have to live uh, with that. We don't know where it's going to go, the critical of smart city. And we think that we're now starting to use some machine learning project. Here's an image of a well-known ar artist, and we begin to ask questions, can we do what he's doing can we do that on the city scale in order to create what we at the moment want to start is uh, training courses for mayors because we also get back information from different mayors to say, hey, if I implant the city full of smart cities, do I know the consequences? Can I really control what is happening? And so we'd like to introduce, we are now working with machine learning, not as a, as a kind of solution box, but more as a, as a kind of what if box and can you then react to the consequences of, of developing uh, the complexity of smart cities that we, that we have. Thank you very much. <laughs>